gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Really appreciate you guys taking a little time to watch the video. Down in Fayetteville, Arkansas this morning with Owen. He's got his uh, weightlifting competition. <laughs> Getting ready to do his weigh-in right now. Had a little time to do today's video. Today we're going to be talking about trolling motor operation and how most anglers make mistakes doing it. Most, I'm like I said in the title, I think 90% of the people do not know how to correctly run a trolling motor. They think they do, but they don't. So I'm going to give you guys some good tips and advice that will definitely help you catch some more fish with that. Okay, first of all, trolling motor operation, it's, it's critical for everything. It's, I don't care if you're fishing offshore, if you're fishing the bank, whatever being able to position your boat um, that meets a lot of different factors makes the difference between catching fish or not catching fish it definitely makes the difference in how many bass you catch so i'm going to give you guys some tips on how to how to approach it with that we're going to mainly talk about the shallower water target applications um, but also a little bit of offshore first of all um, here's one thing about trolling motors in my opinion it, they're part of a bass of bass's environment because if you if you figure that ever since a bass is born on any public lake they've heard a trolling motor and it's like they don't know any difference it's like as soon as they were hatched out and they became bass fry they started hearing outboard motors and trolling motors so bass being the evolutionary creature that has evolved over millions of years they adapt to their environment with this so the point of what I'm talking about here is when you have increased trolling motor noise or outboard noise on a lake, I think it has a negative effect on the personality and the mood of the bass biting. No different than like if a bad cold front went through. If, if you're out on the lake and they hear a bunch of trolling motors or if they hear <clears throat> the trolling motor coming down a bank that's like, <clears throat> excuse me, super loud and noisy, <clears throat> I think that they react to that and they, they just, they're not as aggressive when they hear that noise. So given that, um, I had a friend of mine that was a diver and he was telling me about observing bass around boats and trolling motors. And he noticed a significant difference when somebody was running a trolling motor and they turned it on and off a lot versus if they just had it on all the time. Now there was a, re he said that they would react to the trolling motor just being on period, especially faster. But he said the main thing that really, you know, affected the bass negatively or moved them is if you were on and off that trolling motor all the time. So that's important to remember. Here's a couple things that you got to take in consideration. And this is what I'm talking about. Most people don't know how to run a trolling motor. Most bass anglers, I'm going to say 90% of the bass anglers, when they go down a bank working a stretch of shoreline or whatever, it, it doesn't matter if it's docks or grass bed or lay downs or stumps or whatever, and they see a target in front of them, I think about only 10% of the anglers out there actually come into that target at the right speed and the right angle. Most people, that from my, it's been my observation, even some good anglers, they come into a piece of cover a little bit too hot or a little bit too slow or at the wrong angle. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to realize you get one chance. If you're, say you're, say for example, you're fishing down a stretch of bank and you see a good looking lay down tree in the water, you know, that's 50 yards in front of you. You've got one chance to approach that piece of cover uh, to catch that fish out of there. And that's gonna be your highest percentage getting bit is if you come into their right so what you want to do is make sure that you study everything around you study the direction of the wind study the wind speed study if there's any current you know affecting your boat study the motion how much momentum your boat has at the time and come into that piece of cover by manipulating the speed on your trolling motor to where you glide in to that piece of cover and you're at the right distance to make your cast or your pitcher flip. You this you can mess up on this real quick. I mean, you can come in too slow and then you have to make too long of a cast and you're not as efficient, or you can come in too fast and you get on top of the cover and spook the fish, or you come in at the wrong angle. So <clears throat> when you're approaching <clears throat> a piece of cover, <clears throat> Sorry, so I got these sinuses are getting over here, <laughs> congestion. When you're approaching a piece of cover, pay attention <clears throat> to like to the direction of the sunlight that you have, pay attention to the wind, and approach it from the angle where you have your best cast. 
And it's not necessarily a lot of times like approaching it into the wind at all because I prefer approaching cover downwind. I, I'd rather drift into a piece of cover, not use my trolling motor near as much, and then make that cast. <clears throat> I think one of the biggest mistakes people make with the trolling motor is they're constantly feeling <clears throat> that they've got to go <clears throat> into the wind in order to make their cast with that. And the problem with going into the wind, guys, is any time that you run your trolling motor into the wind, you're on it more. You're using your trolling motor more. You're making your 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 you're making your presentations much more noisy. So try to take advantage of the wind and let the wind drift you in there without using the trolling motor. This is a stealth approach. It's very important when you're fishing shallow water cover. Also, before you get to a piece of cover. You need to break it down and you got to des decide how your angles of cast need to be. If it's a lay down log or if it's a dock or whatever, try to figure out how you want to make your cast. You need to come parallel to this object. You need to flip right into it. You need to come around a corner and try to manipulate your boat before you get there for the best casting angle. All this takes awareness. It takes stealth a little bit in order to fully analyze that. Another thing with your trolling motor, guys, is do not get overly dependent in your spot lock. If you've got spot lock, especially you guys that fish offshore, spot lock will spook fish. This is another thing we're talking about. <coughs> Excuse me, about a trolling motor going on and off all the time. Is spot lock will spook fish, even if you guys are fishing offshore structures. So try to rely on spot lock at a minimum with that. And the same applies with fishing offshore structure, guys. If you guys are fishing a break or a drop or a brush pile, you have to do the same thing. You just can't like roll in there and, and get your big motor right on top of it and start casting. Try to approach that area, shut down well in advance and troll into that particular area using the same variables determining how you come in there, your, your current direction and your wind speed, all that type of stuff. Now with offshore fishing, if you're fishing a specific target offshore that's in deeper water, most of the time you can't drift over it because you're making repeated casts like to a drop or a piece of brush or some piece of hard structure. So when you're fishing um, off the bank, a lot of times you have to position your boat into the wind if there's any wind blowing just to make the cast. But I think you'll do a lot better if you keep your troll motor on a constant speed than turning it on and off. <clears throat> and that's another thing when you're talking about running a bank and running targets on there is don't get carried away with your speed. I see so many guys out there that they, it's like they've got one speed on their trolling motor. They put it up on seven or eight and they're about zzz, zzz, zzz. every time they turn it on off, it's, it's just moves too fast. Dial it back guys. Most of the time when I'm fishing, I've got my trolling motor speed on two, no more than three, because this allows you to keep your foot on the trolling motor, not take it off all the time, and have not have a nice slow pace down the bank. So don't don't be one of those guys that has a trolling motor dialed up, you know, turned up too high. And on and on the flip side with that, you don't want to be a turtle. You don't want to like, you know, if if you fish a piece of cover and then you see another piece of cover say 100 yards up in front of the boat, yeah, click the trolling motor up and get up there. Don't just like fart around, you know, make sure that you're efficient with that. So you got to have a balance, basically just finding the right speed with that. Um, another thing that will help you with this a lot, and I'm going to do a video on this, is if you, if, if you do like specifically leg exercises, like a lot of lunges and squats and that type of stuff, it will allow you to stand up and keep your foot on that troll motor a lot more efficiently without getting tired. I think a lot of people do that. A lot of people are on and off their troll motor a lot of times because they're out of shape. They don't have the endurance and the stamina to stay on it on one leg all day long. That's going to be a big part of it too. Ultimately, you just have to practice. Running a troll motor is an art form. It's no different than driving a car, driving a boat, throwing a bowling ball, swinging a golf club. It's an art form. And once, once you get good at it, it becomes like some type of an, like a dance almost. And I've seen some guys I, that are just like, they can, they can back up a trolling motor on high and put their boat, you know, back in the boat slip, slip perfectly. I mean, you can get really good with a trolling motor. 
But the main thing, guys, is, is just be aware that the bass are aware that you're there. They're sensitive to noise. They're sensitive to vibration. And the stealthier and the quieter you can be, the more bass you're going to catch. So, anyway, I hope you guys hope it kept, hope it helps you guys catch a few more fish. So we're going to get into the gym here. We'll talk later. See you.